Hi guys, um, don't often do component reviews because um, they're a little, little bit boring unless it's something that I think is really worth a mention like that super cheap um, diatone stack which um, has served me well. Um, but this caught my eye following my review of the rather beautiful iFlight Zing Motors. Um, and I hadn't paid iFlight too much attention before that. But this caught my eye and I thought it would be worth having a play with. So if I just get this out. So this is the iFlight Success 20 by 20 flight controller and ESC and you can get it also with a 200 milliwatt VTX um, which is also 20 by 20 in the stack um, and I haven't because I've got no time for little tiny 200 watts 200 milliwatt VTXs but the reason why I'm looking at this is this guy is rated for 35 amps constant 45 amps burst and is rated to 6s now I've tried 20 by 20 stacks um, on sort of 5 inch 4s quads before um, the HG LRC was it F40 um, I also tried a full speed one and various others <coughs> excuse me and what I found is that they flew absolutely fine for a, a little bit and then randomly died or the first time that you had a, a crash or you got stuck in a tree and you had to rev your mortars to get yourself down on the props couldn't spin properly um, they died so I haven't really got a huge amount of time for these little um, components that um, have big claims but given I could get this for free from Banggood for, um, for a review and given the recent success of the amazingly good iFlight motors I thought I'd give it a whirl um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stress test this little guy and in my own way I'm going to do it on a 5 inch and because somewhat annoyingly my recent Hyperlow RS Plus build the flight controller randomly died for god knows why, what reason it was a CL Racing F7 which is usually really reliable um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transplant this little guy into my 6S 5 inch freestyle build and we'll see if it lasts <laughs> Because it's rated for 45 amps bursts or 35 amps constant and there's no way on this earth that this guy will pull anywhere close to that sort of amps it will top out at 120 something like that absolute max you won't ever see anywhere close to 170 odd amps that this guy um, is claiming especially on 6s which are lower amps as well so that's what we're going to do with it now the board itself i've got to say is, is a beautiful little thing i particularly like this 3d printed mount on the bottom of the esc and handily for once they've used proper steel screws running through so the stack's not gonna sort of fall off like they sometimes do with those little m2 plastic screws um, and again you can see we've got little 3d printed uh, spacers and then we've got a couple of um, soft mounts to sandwich in the flight controller and these rather lovely little um, self-locking locking nuts on top giving you tons of space obviously you just cut these um, shorter um, if you weren't running the VTX or whatever else up there so first impressions are really really good it does however have a flaw in my opinion because like the HG LRC ones until they recently changed it this guy the flight controller and the ESC connect together with one of these little sort of pin connectors directly to each other and in the past before what you've sometimes found with these is that the pin connector breaks um, and it often breaks because you, it's very difficult to soft mount something that has a hard mounted piece of plastic and wire between it however given iFlights have included these little 3d printed uh, mounts here and we've got soft mounts either way 
we shall see how this does. <laughs> Um, the rest of it is pretty basic. Um, it is a tiny little flight controller, um, so we can't uh, sort of expect, you know, a million ports and different bits and bobs on it. But it has the basic things that you will need. Um, so we've got connectors, quite a lot of them. So on the underside, we've got two connectors. Um, one set is for basically a buzzer, so a ground buzzer um, LED as well and um, a 5 volt and on the other one we've basically got ground 5 volt um, and RX and TX1 and PWM and then on the other side of it we have we have another connector <clears throat> this one is for your VTX so you need a, um, a connector socket a 4 pin connector socket and we've got audio video ground and 5 volt and on the other side, we've got ground 5 volt S bus or I bus or 3.3 volt. And it looks like we've got three UARTs, although I don't know how many or three. So in terms of features, there's nothing sort of particularly special about this. You wouldn't want to be running this with compasses and all the rest of the gubbins. This is really for a sort of ultra light build. And this would probably be of more, most interest to those guys who are rubbing, running sort of sub 300 gram. Um, races um, and I have heard that there are some people out there running the Airbots um, what is it the D-Shot 1200 Ori um, ESC which is 20 by 20 although somewhat bigger than this little guy so it can be done but I think my point about this is if this works and this holds you know a 5 inch freestyle quad of a decent weight with a GoPro, GoPro and doesn't fry I'll pronounce this absolutely amazing. If it fries, my point will be, stop saying that things can do 45 amps and 6S and all the rest of it, when looking at it and the capacitors, etc. that you've got on it, it just doesn't look feasible. <laughs> And we could argue that really they're looking for you for you to put this into a micro quad where you'll see sort of people running three inch um, quads with 14 or 7 motors with some silly 40 amp ESC in it, even though in, when it's in the air, it will never pull more than, you know, 15 amps per motor. But if, if you're going to call something 6S, 35 to 45 amps, it better be able to cope with that, or I'm calling it a duff product. Ha <laughs> ha! As I had a random flight controller on my RS Plus, I figured I may as well give it a shot. So I've quickly installed the little iFlight into my RS, running the iFlight Zing uh, 2207 6S 1700 KV. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. We've got the the run cam um, eagle at the front, the micro version, um, and at the back I've just put in a TBS um, Unify 5 volt. And in addition to the, or should I say, instead of the little capacitor that comes with this 20 by 20 flight control, I've I've added a bigger 35 volt 680 UF um, capacitor just for some peace of mind, really. Um, and as you can see, it frees up a lot of real estate. I haven't sort of shortened any wires or anything because I wanted to sort of test this guy out and not have to bodge around if it blows up and um, putting everything back together again. So I've left everything relatively loose. Um, I'm running Crossfire as well. And I'm basically just using the two TX3 pads up front. And I've got um, the TBS Smart Audio working um, on the back TX pad as well. Um, I've tried to avoid as many of these um, little connectors as I possibly can for two reasons. What really um, the connectors that they give don't really match anything that I use, the Unifier or anything like that. 
Um, and the second reason is I just absolutely hate them. Um, I'd much rather have solder pads than mess around with, with these things, so I've kind of left them alone. So we've got two UARTs working at the moment. Um, I'm guessing if you were using S Plus, you could probably um, get away with um, with running UART control on the um, on the camera as well, but I haven't messed around with that, so I can't um, I can't verify. So really, this having built it, this flight controller is really built. Um, or made for the VTX um, which clips on top and into this uh, little little pin connector here which is currently covered by a little uh, plastic cover um, and really all the design is based around that so it's a little bit of a pig to work on um, given half of these connectors aren't things that we want um, without the VTX and the VTX seems to have quite a lot of pads on it um, which are really missing from this little guy but as I said before, um, really what I'm interested in is can this guy do 6S on a big quad? And, and even, you know, lightened up like this, this is still a relatively decent weight um, of quadcopter. Um, so can this guy hold up to 6S full bore? Um, as you'll know previously, I'm not the fastest pilot in the world. However, I've come up with a secret weapon. So I'm going to run instead of running the normal GoPro mount like so, which is 30 degrees I'm going to run this guy which I can adjust and is currently set to 45 degrees um, and I'll run my camera at a similar angle probably 40 degrees or so which should uh, make me put my foot down so yeah, so let's see if the iFlight motors kill the iFlight success. Somewhat to my amazement, it survived not only 6S thrashing, but multiple crashes as well. So there you go. I take it all back, I fly. Your little ESC worked. <laughs>